Hello, I'm Adriana. In order to become a channel or a vessel, I have worked on my issues every single day for the past eight years. This has allowed me to clear up my vibration and bring in the higher vibration energy information messages from the divine from the other side. A lot of times the messages come to me in clear audience form, so I, I hear what my guys are saying, but sometimes it's also just a feeling or other, <laughs> other ways. It's been changing a lot, especially the past week. So anyway, this reading today is for an individual. We're going to connect our energies in a moment. Um, reading to give you the information you need to resolve any questions you may have at this point and bring more positive energy through to your space. All right, so let's align our energies real quick. <laughs> real quick. If you could center your energy, so imagine your aura, your energy field pulling into the center of your, of your space here. And just take some deep breaths into your heart. We're going to go with a simple one for now. Okay. All right. Foundational energy, seven of earth, queen of water, the fool, and the wheel of fortune. Okay. I will show you the cards as we go along. Right now, I just want to get them out in front of me so I see where we're going. The beneficial energies for you, five of fire, four of air, and four of fire. Okay, that's two four so far. Challenge energy, please. Eight of earth. Judgment. Huh. When is it enough? That is the question. And then, ultimately, where are we? Three of air, that is our spiritual lesson, outcome, everything overcome. So we will get there. Okay, now with the foundational cards, what's going on on the inside, what may be hidden from other people, um, foundation is showing what is going on on the inside for you, but what is at the heart of your questions? It feels like you have a new opportunity in front of you. And there's something about this opportunity that almost feels, that feels unreal. Like either it's too good to be true or um, it just doesn't feel like it's part of this world. It, it feels almost like it's too, how to describe what I'm seeing. So like some of these flowers look real to me, like these cherry blossom-ish, but then there are others that look cartoonish. And it's the cartoonish flowers that are jumping out to me. So this opportunity is like, can I really believe it? It's almost out of this world. And she's facing the wheel of fortune. And that means that your destiny is in charge of this. Your higher self and your guides are definitely at the hand of the wheel here. And it feels like we're moving away from a purging of the past or I want to use the pur purgatory, which I don't really even quite frankly know what that word means, but um, we're moving away from that. We're moving away from the burning off of the past and we're moving back into a space of growth. But there also feels like there's some uncertainty around this growth, what it looks like or where it's taking you, these clouds at the top. We can't quite see where this is going. And the fool as well, I'm really drawn to the inside of this beehive. We don't really know what's in there. I mean, we know what's in there, but we don't know what it would look like if we looked in there. And so it's kind of like, I know that there's sweetness. I know there's a silver lining, but I'm not really sure about this. Aspects of this still look like they might be a threat or they might not be great for me or... Um, I'm not really sure if I can trust it. 
And on the other side of this, you're trying to figure out emotionally where you stand. Queen of Water with the Seven of Earth, Seven of Earth assessing where things are. And the Queen of Water is wishing that you would take a little more time to just enjoy where this new possibility is taking you. Um, she's so serious. She's so heavy in, in the feeling I'm getting from these cards. It's just so um, ponderous and weighty that it's like just just flow. Just, just let go of all of that weight, that heaviness. Um, the seriousness and lighten up, lighten up with the, um, with the way you're looking at it, with the way you're feeling about it. And I know that you're trying to do that. I feel like with the seven of earth, you are trying to lighten up, but it's almost like, I don't know if it's like you're afraid to let go of responsibility or you think that it's too cavalier or too careless just to be like, ah, it'll work out. It's all right. You know, the fool is just that. She's not wise. She's innocent. Whereas the seven of earth seems to be a bit more composed and put together. And, you know, I know how things are. I know where the lay of the land is. She's a lot more street smart. And, and maybe that's some of it. You're, you're too smart for what's going on because what's in front of you Maybe you have to maybe you have to be a little bit dumb. You know, maybe the learning curve is going to be bigger for you this time. Maybe you don't have all the answers right now. So it does kind of feel like you don't know anything. And that's perhaps what's worrying you, that it's just too heavy. That emotion right now is too heavy. Okay, so what is going for you? Five of fire, four of air, four of fire. So in my other deck, the judgment card, which does come out for you later, is about rebirth. And I'm getting a little bit of that same semblance here with these two fours. The rebirth, re, the ability... The ability to recreate yourself, the ability to reimagine yourself a different way. So you're someone that comes through tests or you come through opposition. And once you've come through opposition, you tend to think about it. You tend to go into reflection about what that means. And this is an incredible strength right now, self-reflection, because it will allow you to make the changes that you need to make. Um, because the four of fire is is coming to a celebratory moment. But it's like you're not sure or we're, we're not sure what the celebration is going to be. There's a raw energy here that I'm getting with the four of fire where it, it almost feels impulsive, like you just jump in to something and it turns out to be okay. So it's different than the way you usually go through. When you go through opposition, okay, I need to back up here because I'm, I'm just getting confused with the different energies coming in. Give me some clarity, please. Okay, the four, what was actually gonna happen is you're gonna feel tossed into the fire before you think you're ready. You'd like a little more time to think about it, the four of air. You'd like a little more time to be clearer or to have more and more information, but the four of fire is going to force you or push you into action quicker than you're perhaps ready to. And the message here is it's, it's all okay. Even though your self-reflection is important, the actual going through Everything you learn in the process of having opposition and, and holding things at bay and overcoming obstacles, all of that is actually in itself preparing you. It's like the process prepares you. So you're going to be fine. And I also feel like there is going to be assistance for you. It's not like you're thrown into the cold or you're thrown into the pot alone. Specifically, I don't think this is just 
from the other side. I think it will be sent from the other side. You're going to have some kind of support. Um, and it's funny because that support is not going to leave you until you're ready for them to leave. So however long you need them to be there, they're going to be there. So again, there's really nothing to be afraid of. Now, our last cards are, to me, the, whew, these are the trickiest ones. <laughs> okay, so Challenge, Eight of Earth, and Judgment. And I feel like they're going off in different directions. Eight of Earth energy is going here. Judgment is going here. And so it's like, when is enough enough? When have I worked hard enough? When is it time to just say, look, I've gotten to the, to the breaking point. How do you know when the breaking point is? That's some of what you've been trying to figure out emotionally with, um, with the Queen of Water. You notice all that water underneath her and look at we have the same water underneath the Judgment card. So you've been attempting to emotionally assess when is enough enough. Okay, so when, when is enough enough? I feel like you've been working at this so long that you don't, you're, um, you're almost over conditioned or over used to having to work so hard. Um, I mean, there's so many metaphors for this when, when you're used to working so hard and someone says, Oh really? That's, that's the way, that's how hard you work. You don't have to do that. You're like, wait a minute. I don't, but that's just normal. Um, or when muscles are used to overcompensating and then suddenly you strengthen the muscle that has been weaker and then they, they're like, wait a minute, I, I, didn't, I don't have to work so hard? There's, you've, you've lost sight somehow. You've lost sight of a, a way to measure when enough is enough. You've been pushed too far, pushed too long. And so I think that's what some of this four of air was talking about as well. Sometimes this card is pull back and, and take some time out to recharge. You need to set some boundaries for yourself in this situation so that you can come to a different place. That's what the judgment card is telling you to do. You've got to look at this from a different vantage point. And if it's a case of you've been working too hard, you need to take a break. Um, a small break, a long break, a quick break, a short break, a, whatever it is, something that just puts you in a different mind frame so that you can more accurately assess what's going on. Because once you've made that assessment, your attitude towards the new opportunity we talked about that you aren't sure of, you're, you're going to run towards it rather than walk cautiously. So it's your overwork, your overburdened, your um, dedication to doing too much of the same thing that's keeping you from making a clear break with, we need to stop this now and we need to go on to the next. All right, now three of air now completely makes sense because this is about knowing when enough is enough again. When you have hurt yourself to, when, when you have allow, allowed yourself to go too long or too hard, that's the same as hurting yourself and you're weakening yourself without knowing it, which just makes it easier for you to be taken advantage of. And the three of air is teaching you that you're not the victim here. You've actually opened the door. There's a book that I really love. Um, it's called Carpe Jugulum and it's by Terry Pratchett. It's in his Discworld series and... It talks about vampires cannot go where they're not invited. And the king of the new land is kind of, he's not very smart. He's a bit like our fool here. And he sends an invitation to the vampires. And so he basically gives them the power to enter the kingdom and take over the kingdom. But had they not been invited, they would not have been able to come. So this is about when you invite, when you find yourself struck with lower energy or taken down by someone's backstabbing or, or um, betrayed by someone's disloyalty or 
I think for some, this is actually about being hurt to your face, not just about being stabbed in the back, being actually um, hurt on purpose, right to your face. It happens because some of you allowed it. Some part of you allowed it. Some part of you was either too nice or not listening to your instincts or overriding a feeling in yourself. And this is really the worst thing we can do, override our own instincts, ignore our own intuition, because that act itself is self-betrayal. And it's because you're so used to riding the same horse over and over and over, this eight of pentacles here, that you don't realize when you've given away too much of yourself or you've overstepped the line. So, I feel like there's a question that you need to ask yourself and let's see if we can get clarity on what that question is. The devil and the night of fire. So this is about actions and words. Are the actions backing up the words? Are they all talk and no action? <laughs> actions speak louder than words. It's that um, old adage or fairy tale kind of saying. Um, the devil is the illusion or the, it's the energy that will do this to you, that is harmful to you. Um, night of fire is just pure action. So that's, that's your yardstick or your measuring stick. First of all, are you acting in a way that is consistent with the way you want to be? With the words that you tell yourself, with the values that you hold, are you acting consistently with those? Second of all, the way to assess other people, do their actions speak louder than the words? Do their actions and words match? That's really the key. Do the actions and words match? Because if they don't, if they say one thing and they do another, then like this devil, like this three of air, they can't be trusted and you've got to set up more boundaries for yourself. This is about looking outside yourself for once and not looking inward, which sounds odd, but the queen of water, remember that was you trying to assess everything emotionally, like how do I feel? Because you've, you've overrode your intuition or your feelings so often, this voice isn't loud enough. So in order to give that space back, this, and I believe this is the growth we're talking about, it's the regrowth of your intuitive muscle. You've got to look and make sure that the actions and words are matching, because if they are, this person can be trusted. If they are not, this person needs to be questioned. You need to question yourself as far as your involvement with them. All right, I'm going to close the reading here. Thank you for being with me in this experience, for opening your energy, for receiving this loving information. Thank you to our guides and to the beneficial energy on the other side that wants only the best for us. Thank you for the wisdom and the guidance and the clarity. I'll see you again soon.